Um, so I'm a PhD candidate in computer science, and I am studying at Ohio. Uh, so I'm coming all the way from Ohio. And uh, my dissertation is largely about um, use of graph databases and provenance to study um, impact assessment of schema evolution in a data warehouse context. So the context is data warehouse, but we are really investigating use of graph databases, and we are heavily using Neo4j. The first question we had was, even before Neo4j, whether we go with graph database or we go with the relational. Um, and the big reason we chose graph database was we are talking about an interconnected domain here. Like data warehouse is a very multi-layered domain. So you have queries, you have ETL, you have schemas, and all these components are tightly coupled. So we really were looking for a database that can actually capture the relationships better. And there is no debate like with the popularity of Neo4j that it totally excels at that. And even going specifically to, all right, we have made a choice for graph database. Now why Neo4j? I think if we see in the market today, there are a lot of graph databases. Uh, but Neo4j, I believe, has been very mature. It has a very strong developer community and very active one. Um, and just um, at, in the keynote today, like, there are so many features coming up with security or clustering or scaling or enterprise. You talk about it, and Neo4j is having those. So I think that way, it's a very mature platform, very mature database. Uh, it's not just a playground. So I would say I like a couple of features strongly, like its visualization. It's not just a database, and then you write queries, but it really supports this nice visualization that comes with it. Um, because that's very important when you are actually talking about paths and relationships. If you do not have that visualization sort of framework, then it, the whole purpose def is defeated. Um, and the other idea is its, its ability to really use drivers, and I can actually program uh, using Java and have my Neo4j queries in it. So it has this REST API, which I think is really cool, and I'm using it heavily in my PhD. Um, so it's one of them, the big part is Neo4j, but other thing is more on relational side. So we have all our input artifacts as relational schemas, and then we are using this tool called Pentaho, which is the business intelligence tool, and it allows you to model your ETL queries uh, workflows. And it's graphical, it's XML based. So another uh, use case for Neo4j here was we have these ETL workflows, then we have queries which are in SQL. Uh, against all those relational schemas. Now, how do we find a canonical common model that we can bring all these artifacts into? So Neo4j provides a really nice, um, uh, I would say, general representation in terms of nodes, edges, relationships, that we can really bring, flatten all our heterogeneous artifacts. Well, so I just gave a talk about um, dockerizing Neo4j and using container orchestration. Um, and I did some of that work at Cincinnati Children's Hospital during my internship. So, and I'm really happy to see the way Neo4j has embraced Docker because Docker is getting really popular with all this containerization stuff going on. And the way Neo4j officially supports by building all these images, I think for the people who are really looking into containerization, uh, Neo4j has the built-in support. Um, and I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, I presented, and it's a great community. And yeah, it's a pleasure. Okay. Well, I'm hoping to wrap up um, soon, maybe next semester, which is spring or um, summer latest. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs>